All right, guys, automated ticketing at your event. Presented by me, if you ain't figured that out yet. <laughs> anyway, question for you before we get started is how many of you guys actually received the letters that I sent out to your fair? Anybody else? How many people are here because of the information in the brochure that the convention made? Everybody. Who am I? My name is Nathan Wright. I've been in this industry pretty much since I was born. Um, we actually came from Brown County. Uh, my parents had, a, they're in the outdoor food concession industry. They're still in to this day. And we moved here to Columbus in 2005 to work for Charlie Cox. If you don't, if y'all don't know him, he's sitting right here. Um, I encourage you to meet him if you don't know him. Uh, he has the contract, the food and beverage contract at the Ohio Exposition Center. Last year was where we actually introduced the, the, the ticketing system to the market in our, on our end. We had it here at the convention. I don't know if you remember, but it was just right down the hall here. Anyway, today what I want to talk about is how we can work together, more so work together as a team to increase efficiency at your fair or your event. Then I want to talk to you about the machines. I want to show you the ins and outs of the machines and how they work, how it would work if the customer was walking up and using it. I want to show you our setup, what we've done in the past, and how hopefully it can work for you. And if not, how we can maybe adapt to your fare and make it work. One of the bigger things that I want to talk about is how we can prepare you or your fare board for the auditors. Where have we been, what have we learned, and where can we come together as a team and grow? And everybody's question is how much does it cost? I have a question for you. You guys know what your payroll is, that you pay people to, take ticket, or ticket, to sell tickets for you. You know what your cost is to pay the payroll taxes and everything that's associated with the payroll. What if I was to come to you and say, let's figure that number out, and then I'll reduce it from there? What's the future hold? Where are we going? What's next? And then, everybody's favorite, definitely mine, is questions and answers. Because it's more important to me to hear what you guys have to say. So how can we increase efficiency it's your fair or event. Number one thing is we can eliminate all of your ticket sellers, which is gonna eliminate all of your payroll. It's gonna eliminate every expense that you have because of your employees. It's going to virtually eliminate any opportunity for theft. <coughs> Complainers. We all know what it's like to have complainers. We all know what it's like to get a call on the radio, so-and-so's gotta go to the bathroom, so-and-so has to go to the hospital, so-and-so, you know, all the complaining that comes along with having a staff. And then you don't have to deal with change bags. It's not your responsibility to deal with the change bags at the event. That's my responsibility. Now, if you don't want that service, we don't have to provide it, but that is one of the things that we do offer. The whole point here is we take care of the whole system for you. We do it all. We come in with our equipment and we set up everything. We're there with it during the event. We tear it down and we leave. Now, if you are after something different, of course we can accommodate you in that manner. It eases the job of the treasurer. The treasurer's got enough tasks. There's enough things that he has to do. So by us coming in and working with that person as a team, it'll make his life much easier. He don't have to deal with change. He don't have to deal with the everyday occurrences of having to go back and forth to the bank or keeping $100,000 or $200,000 on hand for change for his gains. That's our job. And last but not least, he does not have to deal with depositing the cash. <coughs> he doesn't have to take it to the bank. Why? Because we'll do that. Now, if, if you want, to, want us to give you the cash instead, that's fine too. We can do that. 
I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but we really, really, really make it a point to simplify the process that you go through with the auditors. Now, I haven't personally met with each and every one of you yet, but I'm sure everybody has a, a different situation or a, um, a different way they compile their reports when it comes to the auditors. And again, whatever it is, if you want us to do that service for you, we'll adapt to whatever it is that you need us to adapt to to help you. The machines. These are the two versions of the machines that we have. If you can see the laser pointer, we're going to work with the one on the left. This little LCD screen here, actually first of all I should say, I don't have one here, but I have two of them over at the booth and they're going to be in operation throughout the whole convention. So we can go over there and we can play with them. But anyway, this LCD screen here is going to tell you everything. It's going to walk the customer through the whole nine yards. So if a customer was to walk up to this machine, what they would need to do first is what, decide whether they're paying with a credit card or they're paying with cash. Whatever they decide, they either swipe their card or they insert cash. Cash here, credit card here. Once they do that, these three lights are going to light up. They make their selection on whatever they want. Now, in this particular example, <clears throat> it's 20 tickets for $20, 10, 5, and 1. All those options are actually changeable. If you, want, if you want them to all be $1, we can change that. If you want them to be $10 each, we can make them that. Once they hit those buttons, whichever selection they want, if they put more than the amount of money in, their change is going to come out right here. And then their tickets is going to dispense here. That's the process of that machine, and that's how it works. This one here is quite a bit, well, it's the same type of machine, but it's a little bit different in the sense uh, there's no change. It does not give change. This was the very first one we did. Um, everybody likes to refer to this as my house. But uh, anyway, I designed this with the intention of actually putting another machine here, here, and then two more on the other side, and an ATM right here. We haven't done that yet for one reason. It takes a lot of labor to set that up and tear it down. But again, if you're looking for something like this, then we can definitely talk about it. But again, how this one will work, you can insert your credit card or you can insert cash. Now what to keep in mind is if you insert cash, if you insert a dollar, it's gonna give you one ticket. If you insert a $100 bill, it's gonna give you 100 tickets. You don't get an option with this one. Currently right now, uh, we're working on, I got a company in Fort Lauderdale that's working on figuring a way out for me to put a change dispensing unit in that one. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have that done soon. But anyway, that's the machines. Now, this is a setup that we did in Marietta. This is their main entrance gate where you walk in. And Richard, you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, this is their main gate. How this system worked is you walk in and there's the machine. And then off to the left side here is where you would go out into the fair. Now, while it worked okay, what we found as an issue is it was causing backup in lines because the tent wasn't big enough. People come with five or six people in their family, they can't fit in the tent. It just causes nothing but chaos. So the next one, next thing I want to talk about is a new setup that we want to implement this year. This is another one of their gates. And then here's what I want to do. I want to take a 20 by 20 tent. Keep it in mind, this little space here is the gate. This space here is where they would go out into the fair. Okay. So picture this as a 20 by 20 tent, okay? And it would sit right in the corner of the post there. What we want to do this year is we want to put four ticket machines on the left side here, like this, and then we want to put four over there on the right side. Keep it in mind, it's going to give all of this space in the middle here for the customer to bring their family. If it's raining or an issue like that, they can stand there and wait till their you know, mom or dad or whatever gets tickets. Now these little black squares, they're stanchions. You have to have an entrance and an exit. And there has to be enough room for wheelchairs to get through. So the entrance is here. This is where the entrance, where people would come in, get their tickets, do their thing, and then this is where they would go out into the fair. This is the exit. So people that are ready to leave, they come here. And these are all stanchions. They come here and go back to their car. That's the process that we want to talk about. 
And we'll talk about it with Marietta and see if it works. But the whole point of showing you this is to try to give you an idea of what we could potentially do for you and how we can make it work for you. But nonetheless, this is just an example. Depending on your fare, we could help you out. The, the difference with Marietta than a lot of your fares is Marietta, for example, is pretty much all caged in. They park on the outsides and they walk through the gates. Now some of you, I know, uh, you park people and as they're coming in with their car, they would pay then and then go park and then walk into the fair. In their situation, it wasn't that. But we do have some ideas for, for you if you're in that situation. Auditor preparation. This is the way that I compile all the daily data. So we do everything based on tickets. Right here is the machine numbers. Right here is the location of the machines. Starting number, ticket starting number. Ticket ending number, which is gonna give us the amount of tickets sold, plus the value is gonna give us the sale of each location, and which is gonna give us a total. Now, that's based on ticket data, okay? Now, we wanna hope that this and this matches. But unfortunately, you know how it is. Sometimes that doesn't work. Something gets mixed up. But if they match, we're good. Anyway, here you have your starting change. For example, say you put $1,000 in the machine to start. And then you would count your total cash at the end of the night, including starting change. And then that's going to give you your total gross income for cash. Then you add your credit cards, it'll give you your total income down here is going to give you your 100% total. And what your intention is, is for this and this to match each other. If they match each other, then right, we're right. If they don't, we got to do an audit and figure it out why. This here is how I would get paid. So this is your report. You would get this every day. You would get this the, day, the following day. You would get this the day after your first day's worth of events, along with a check. The check is based on this. So we insert the data, we'll have the gross cash, we'll have the gross credits, and then depending on our percentage, all these columns will fill themselves in. Then we have less discounts. What this is, is if I was to give you a discount, then it would go in that column. Uh, a daily service fee, so say it's $10 a day, it would just be a daily service fee. Contract deposits. We require a deposit upon signing the contract. And then that would go in this blank. Say for example, my, say you made $6,000 and my take was $200. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to meet that $1,000 if we was having a $1,000 deposit. So we would just do it until we made that $1,000. Client cash, cash advances. Say you have a concert going on and you come to me and you need five, $10,000. That would go in this blank. I don't owe you that if I give you that in cash. So anyway, once we get there, we have this number minus this, this number equals this number, which is gonna be what I owe you. That's how we can help prepare you for the auditor. Where have we been and what have we done? We've done several events at the state fairgrounds under concessions by cops. Um, I, I'm sure most of you are familiar, there's mm -hmm. over a hundred events that takes place at the Ohio State Fairgrounds every year. That's where we got our start, and that's where we began at. Then we do Kroger Festival, which is the kickoff to the Kentucky Derby in Louisville, Kentucky. This particular event, how it operates, <laughs> is we have alcohol and we have food and beverage. And alcohol and food and beverage, everything takes tickets, the whole nine yards. Up until last year, they had ticket sellers. Again, we get back to the payroll, we get back to the <coughs> complaining, we get back to all the issues that you have with your employees. So, I went in the office one day, and Charlie and I sat down and we had a discussion, he has the con Charlie Cox has the contract to uh, the Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. And I've helped him, I work for, I currently still work for him every year for that event. 
Anyway, so we went in the office and we sat down and we had a discussion on this. We talked about if it would be efficient to actually use machines at this, this event. And it was, it was back and forth, you know, it's, they're not cheap, so we were just talking back and forth, having a discussion about it. Last year, we decided to do it. Keep in mind, we still have ticket sellers. So what we did last year is we reduced the ticket sellers by, I do believe, half, and we inserted the machines. Believe it or not, the machines took care of almost 50% of the sales for that event. Washington County Fair in Marietta. I pretty much told you all about that. We did that, it was very successful for us. I do hope they was as, as happy as they say they are with us. <laughs> uh, we are currently in communication with several events for 2016. I do believe as of this morning it was 13. Um, I'm hoping we get to sign all the contracts too. Anyway, what have we learned since we've done this? We've done this for a solid, well, year, and we're going into the second year now. Changeless machines will not work. You know, our idea, like I told you before, was to try that and see if it worked for bigger events um, so you could put more volume through. The whole thought of it was trying to get people to come through and buy 20 or 30 tickets instead of buying two or three, and then instead of, instead of having to come back and get in line when they buy two or three and then complain because the line's too long. That was our intentions, but we failed with that idea. It just created a lot of complaints. Customers, nobody likes change. They hate it. Um, one thing that we do need to do, we learned this in Marietta big time. I need to dedicate people, two or three people at least, to doing nothing but going around to each machine and making sure they're always full of change. While each machine takes $800 in ones, and, or 800 bills in each dispenser, 800 fives and 800 ones, believe it or not, it's still not enough to even get through a couple hours when you're really busy. So I have to have people that are constantly going around. Another issue that we had was customers leaving their change. Believe it or not, their change would come out, but they wouldn't pick it up and take it with them. They'd come back five minutes later, and then we'd get a whole screaming lecture that they didn't get their change or we cheated them. So what I want to do in the next machines that we get is make it right in front of their face with the light flashing at them. Believe it or not, another issue is people can't even tear the tickets. The tickets, we even put signs on them to tell them to pull them off sideways. But no, they want to pull them down. And they pull them down, they don't rip, they rip the whole ticket. So that's something else that we need to work on. I guess I need to make the signs bigger. Bottom line is customers are impatient. They don't like to wait. Nobody likes to wait. Nobody likes change. Feedback may not always be great, but we're going to continue to grow from it. And we're going to continue to start at the foundation and grow to the top with feedback. That's what's gonna get us there. My goal is to grow together. I wanna to partner with you and grow with you. Teamwork is very important in this industry, in every industry, whether you're in the food biz business, whether you're in the ride business, whatever it is, I believe that teamwork is very essential. Nobody can do it by themselves. We are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But if we work together, we can do our best to become perfect. We are new. And we are young. My team is all young. We want to work with you, and together, I believe that we can and will succeed. Alone, we, we can do so little, but together, we can do so much. That image, I put it on there because I felt that it had a lot of meaning. Pricing. This <coughs> particular subject of pending, or the very, depending on what it is that you're looking for. Food tickets. So the question here is do you want your vendors to accept food tickets? Do you want your vendors to accept tickets for food? Meaning, do you want the customer to go to the machine and buy the ticket and then take it to the food vendor and then the food vendor accepts that 
instead of cash. That's up to you. And I understand that that gets into a contract area that you would have with your vendors. But that is something we can do. That's kind of my point. Alcohol tickets. Kind of the same thing, but we can use it with alcohol as well. Fair gate tickets, which I do believe is pretty much on the minds of probably the majority of you guys. And fair gate tickets is what we did in Marietta last year. And we were successful with it. Concert tickets. So say in the middle of the year you call me and you have a concert going on and you want to sell tickets. We can do that as well for you. Grandstand tickets during your fair, or any time for that matter. It just depends on what you want. We have a price that can work for all of you. For example, if we're pricing you based on gate tickets, we would not want to give you the same price for food tickets, because you probably lose, especially if you're flat rate. I don't want you to say no because of pricing. If pricing is an issue, tell me and we'll fix that. We'll make it work for you. So here's what I want to do. For the first year, if we're able to work together, I want to give you $500 off. So whatever my part is, I'll give you $500 off of it. And then $1,000 off for each year after that, as long as you sign a three-year contract. The future. The future of where we're at. No matter what business that you're in, growth is essential for your success, for my success, for anybody's success that's in business. Somebody told me the other day that standing in front of people and talking is something you did not need to do in order to be successful. Now that is not something that I believe, or I wouldn't be here today. Last night, when I was putting my finishing touches on this presentation, I, was, I had some curiosity. I wanted to see how how far at the beginning we really was. So I went to Google, and I typed in automated ticketing machines. Yes, it has 930,000 results. <laughs> now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> now, those results were train stations, bus stations, and airport kiosks. I also typed in ticket machines. Make it more simpler for Google, for the search engine. Yes, there was 7.4 million results, but those results were this baby right here. Take a number. We see them in the delis and the grocery stores. So that tells you that we are at the foundation of the automated ticketing industry. Nobody is there. While that's good for me, that's also good for you because we can grow together. I look at it this way. While we may have our foundation laid, or while we may be beginning to lay the foundation, whenever we're a million dollar company or whatever it is, I still think that we're striving to lay the foundation. We're striving to continue to grow upwards. I think whenever you put yourself in a situation where you feel like you're gonna stop growing, you're gonna start failing. We are in a growing state. The future. This is what's next. This is what I've been looking at. So this particular system is exactly what I'm after. This is what we need. This screen here is a touch screen. You know how you go to your grocery stores and you have a self-checkout, right? What does it say on the bottom? What does it say on the bottom? Touch here to begin, right? Yeah. That's what this does. Touch here to begin. Yeah, 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 I can put my logo or whatever, but it says touch here to begin. So the next screen, it's gonna ask you to make a selection on how many tickets you want. Now, if you don't like the selections, it also asks you if you wanna enter a quantity. And you can hit that. Once you make your selection and you go to the next screen, you pay. No more work involved. Now, with that in mind, you can pay with cash or credit card. With credit card, I know some of you, I know there's some people, I don't know about you guys, that would rather not have to pay the merchant fees for the credit card, they would just rather do cash. Um, some of your grandstands may be that way. All I gotta do is flip a switch and we can turn that off if you don't wanna use it. 
So, right here is where they would insert the credit card. Right here is where they would insert the cash. <coughs> right here is where their ticket and receipts would come out. Like I said a while ago, right here is where the change comes out. But this light, there's a light on here, and it just keeps flashing. Green, until they pick it up. If they don't pick it up, what am I going to do? It's kind of their fault. I ain't going to tell them that, but you know. <laughs> but anyway, that's that machine. That's what's next. I'm trying to get it introduced to the market this year. We'll see. For them to build it, it takes them several months. That's the problem. They're in, I just told you that the market was not in high demand, but believe it or not, these are in high demand. This is the inner workings of it. This part right here, this part right here is where you insert the cash, which it would come out right here on this one. Or I guess you can call it the cash dispenser. That's the important factor of this machine. And then also down here, the other important factor is this ticket holder, which is really awesome. It holds three sets of tickets, 8,000 in each set. How it works, is it'll only dispense out of one. When it runs out, starts the next one. When it runs out, starts the next one. 24,000 tickets can go into a machine at one time. How many tickets do people need to get in your fare? Whether they're 10 or $20, one ticket. So if each one of these machines goes through $24,000. Is it fair to say that we'd all be happy? Yes? Anyway, that's how the machines work. That's the insides of the machines, and this is what we're going to. What do you think, buddy? What you know. Believe it or not, this machine was getting shipped here to be here for the convention. This is the machine that I wanted sitting right here. He sends me an email on Friday. Great guy. Sends me an email on Friday and says, sorry, I could not turn down $20,000. Sold the way it shows. So unfortunately, I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. So he took the $20,000 and he sold the machine. We actually met with the guy. I'm sure you don't know him. This is my brother. Me and him went to Fort Lauderdale in November, beginning of November, and we met with the guy. His name is Wayne. He's the president and COO of the company. An absolutely fantastic guy. An absolutely fantastic guy. Willing to do anything. Willing to pay for the shipping the machine here. Willing to pay for the shipping it back. Willing to ship me anything that I needed to make this work. But he couldn't turn down 20 grand. I don't blame the man. Anyway. In this business, or any business, I believe that one key step is very critical to anybody's success, and that is mentorship. You cannot start from nothing and go somewhere without somebody guiding you a little bit along the way. Am I right, man? You cannot go anywhere without somebody helping you. In my lifetime, yes, I'm only 26, but in my lifetime, I've had several, several mentors. While I've not always been successful with those mentors, I'm still friends with them today. And I am a firm believer that success is created by how many times you pay. And in my situation, that's several times. And I'm not going to lie. But you know what? I know I'll get there one of these days. And I hope it's with you guys. Also, <coughs> I owe a lot to this man right here, Charlie Cox. Again, if you guys have never met him, if you don't know who he is, which I highly doubt, then I recommend you at least go up to him and introduce yourself. He is a stand-up guy. He's been in the business well over 50 years. I think it's, where are we at, 55? 58. 58 years. He knows his stuff. He is the heavy hitter in this business. He is one of the big guys. He's been there. He's done that. He knows it all. But he's still willing to learn. He's still willing to listen to you. I look at him like I look at my dad. I can walk into his office at any given time, and sit down, and he'll stop what he's doing and he'll have a conversation with me about whatever it is. And to me, that is a great mentor. He's helped me, he's coached me, he's taught me, 
He's allowed me to do practically anything that I want to become successful. My point is, I can't say enough about these. Any means what? So, with that said, I want to give him a second to see if he'd like to say a couple words. Would you like to say a couple words? I always talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of you know me, but we've been in this business 58 years, and we've seen a lot of changes, just like most of you have seen changes. And if you don't believe in the changes, just look at the politicians today. You got people wanting to give you free, free Medicare, people want to charge everybody Medicare. You know, the world has changed, it's totally changed. When the beverage companies come out with 20 ounce bottles, all the people in the business said, it'll never have asked it. I said, guys, it's here. If you don't beat money, they make money off of it. The time will be here in the next five years, but that's the only way you get soft drinks other than at a McDonald's or rest will go to bottles. Your fares eventually will only go to bottles. I predict that because of money. Money. They'll give you money for bottle service. Now, looking at that situation, for years, we've experienced the changes. Young people can't add. Young people can't make change. They don't teach it in the schools today. You know, uh, dishonesty, it's hard to find five people you know that you know is totally honest. If you give them $10,000, they'll give you back $10,000. Honesty of employees, and I have hundreds of employees across the country. It's hard to find honest people. The only reason we don't grow fast, we do, and we do over 400 events a year. And we do the, the big ones, NASCAR, and races, and the Derby. Store. Why don't we do more? It's not equipment. We can buy all the equipment we need. We can't find honest people to send somewhere like Louisville, Kentucky, that'll gross a million dollars in cash. You don't find those people. So, my point is this. Changes has brought on the future, and will make the future. Several years ago, I knew, predicted, and I now say to you, within five years, or sooner, or thereabouts, you will be representing a cash society. Nobody will have cash. I have a daughter and a daughter-in-law today, both of them in business, buy everything with credit cards, everything. <coughs> I'm in the restaurant business. A lot of times, at nighttime, we check out. We don't have enough cash to pay back the tips to the bartenders and the waitresses because 95, 96% of it's all on credit cards. I started credit cards and trailers years ago, and it's amazing. The business people. I have a wife, credit card. She'll buy a 45 cent Coke or a dollar Coke and use a credit card. That's the way people are. In our businesses, they'll come up to our counters, they'll come up to our trailers and give you a credit card to buy $3 for the food. And I could go on and on and on. When we get to a cashless society, and it's right around the corner, you've got to have a plan. Several years ago, and then two years ago with Nathan, I said, I want to develop a ticket machine process to handle this issue. I can name you 46 reasons I've missed to go to a ticket machine. There's only one reason not to. So I'm just saying to you, in five years, you need to start now because in five years you're going to be faced with how do I run a fair or a festival without cash? <coughs> Those people are not going to have cash. Nathan's learning, Nathan's learning fast. He's very smart, that's why I chose him. But trust me. <coughs> Give yourself five years, and you're going to be with a case of society. My prediction. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. <coughs> What's next? I truly hope that we can partner up and we can work together this year. How do you feel about that? How many of you guys? by the raise of hand, would be interested in me coming and meeting with your entire fair board. Okay. 
What I would like for you guys to do, just to get the feel of what it is that we have, is to come over in the Franklin room, Franklin room, and visit our booth. We have the big red one that they call my house set up. <laughs> and then we have two of the smaller four model units. They're plugged in, they're working. We can just show you how to use them. Just give me a few minutes to get over there before you come rushing me up. <laughs> anyway, like I just said, we can talk some details and we can actually experiment with the machines. Let's grow into a successful 2016 working as a team. Before we get into questions and answers, if you go to our website, we're actually working on it right now, but what I did is I put a link up there called Convention 2016, where you can actually go there and you can pull the presentation that we have here off. You can download it to your computer and you can show it, you can look over it yourselves, you can show it to the rest of your fair board, whatever you'd like to do. But anyway, with that said, does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> What keeps a family of four uh, buying only two tickets? What keeps them from only buying two tickets? The family of four walks up there, and there's they only buy two tickets. The oh, four people well, walk this, in. Okay, let me back up. I'll show you. Did we? I'm gonna show you right here. Right here. In this particular situation, our setup, we have them go out into here. Right here, we have a person that stands there. And everybody that walks through there <coughs> has to have a ticket or they don't go through there. Unless your particular fair has an age or, you know, people young can get it for free, however your fair works. So you is. still have to have a first, you would provide a person for there then? Yes, we would provide a person for that. And then that keeps them from... Going out that keeps them, yes, that keeps them from going out. And that person is also responsible <laughs> for paying attention to the exit gate. Bandit's right there. Anybody else? I'm concerned about. Oh, go ahead. I'm concerned about getting 13,000 people through there. Through how many gates do you have? Uh, the major gate, three small gates. Well, I'll tell you what we could do. What we could do in a situation of that, I'm sort of familiar with it. We can have a bigger tent and we can put more machines in that tent if that would work. Does that make sense? We can expand the size of the tent and add more machines. Because what happens at our fair is one of the big things is we have three trailers that are three people carriers. It goes to the parking lot right now. And then they're setting off what? <coughs> All like on a shuttle. Yeah, a shuttle. Okay. And so you've got three of those running through and you'll want to back it up too far. So that's, that's an issue that For sure. In, in a situation like that, I you know, I'll think about it, but I think we have to have a lot of machines to take care of that. But I don't think that's the question. So the, the same ticket that you bought would be your uh, re enter ticket, is that correct? If you left and wanted to come back? If they, okay, so you're saying if they leave and they want to come back? But if we do it, if we work with a hand stamp, yes, we would just change college daily. But if we work with a hand stamp system, meaning they, when they go out that go out into the fair or when they go through the exit gate, they get a hand stamp. It'd just be different every day. Does that make sense? Well, it does. But we've got some issues with the hand stamps. Well, I mean, we could do something different. We could always do armbands or you know anything else, whatever's on your mind. Next, go ahead. Uh, like, where are they hooked into the credit card process? It's it's works like on the phone mobile line or works on the mobile phone? network. It's all wireless. Okay, so you work more like a phone system, or uh, you just unsupported. You don't need Wi-Fi. Right? No, 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 nothing. Okay. It, it takes then, like, just like yourself. I guess when you have a line of people, like how many, on average, I guess like per hour or half hour or something, how many people does one machine service? Like if everyone's like not you know stupid well, using it. That's the problem. That's what we see. Is, and that's the reason for changing and getting a better machine. So we can try to put all the details right in front of you. Give an idea though, like how many it's how many people it can handle like in a given amount of time. I'd say 
if it had a line of 50 people, if everything's working smoothly and the customer's yeah. not acting silly, I'd say you can get them through there in a couple minutes. If yeah. they're doing, yeah, if everything, if they're doing their part. But if they want to stay in there and complain and bitch and moan and you know all that, then. And now do you have then do you have like an attendant along with the machine? I mean, like, did you have eight machines in that tent? Yes, like, we have. Theory, right? Like, so there'd be someone at the exit plus an attendant maybe to handle issues? We would have people running around the grounds at every single one of the, the machines to make sure that they are functioning properly and to make sure people aren't having issues. Answer your question. Next. Um, so you're at the point of sale. How would you handle, like, a pre-sale ticket coming through, gate entrance or something like that? Like, we offer... We have, our memberships include six or seven admissions to the fair. Okay. How would that play into your gates? So, are you saying that you might sell them online? We, we sell them before fair. Yeah. And then they, are you talking about like season passes? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, if they come up and they've already bought their season pass, then we would just know by you telling us that and then we could just let them through. Then, does that make sense? How and that's that not something you would. In other words, that's there, that's, that's something that you don't know. You would just, you just collect the ticket then. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay, so basically two different tickets you make. What do you mean by type of ticket? I'm well, I'm saying, he's saying that if they have a ticket, like like he said, like if it's a, someone that's an exhibitor and they get four tickets and they're coming through to pay, they don't have to go through all that. They can just go on through, hand those four tickets to the person they're coming through, and you don't do anything with that. You don't get a percentage of that. You don't have anything to do with right. that. So that would be sold. But you would take record of it as you. Well, yeah, the yeah, ticket would go in the bucket. Yeah. Okay. We can have a separate bucket for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Again, something that we could elaborate on. Go ahead. Nathan, I have a vision. Let's see if I'm on track with this. Yes. My, my four-day passes, my seven-day passes, my 4-H kids, those are all pre-sale. They've got their band. Do, they come in. They go straight through the gate. This could just be used as general public revenue, correct? So that's going to cut down on all, a lot of the people that are coming in because they've got the wristbands already, the pre-sales. That would have nothing to do with you. That would all be done ahead of time through our office. And this would be a really good setup for the general public coming in who don't have their seven-day pass, the four-day pass, or the 4-H pass, correct? <coughs> yes. If I understand you correctly, I do believe. So you're saying that, that, that you, you wouldn't want to use it for the people coming in. But you would want to use it for the people that's in the fair that did not do that when it was coming in? Is that kind of what you're the, the fair people know they're coming ahead of time. So the family send them a check for a seven day pass, a four day pass. They have those passes. They would go on through. This would be a really good, especially getting started in the system, to use as a general admission for grandma's coming to watch Johnny show his. Yes. Yeah. So, in other words, set it at your gate, similar to that. And then. In other words, we'd let the people with the passes go on through. They go on through. And then everybody else Because there's no money being exchanged, so that's already been done on the back side or the front side with our yeah. office. Yes. So that's possible. Absolutely. Too. So what you're saying <laughs> is we'd let them go through, mm -hmm. and then we would just make everybody else get a ticket. Yeah, everybody else has to stop and get a ticket. It's yes. not general admission. And they Absolutely. Have a ticket date. Absolutely. Go ahead, bud. We sell season tickets. <clears throat> okay. First three days of the fair. Okay. How would you do that? Oh, you sell them? I mean, during the fair. The gate person sells okay. season tickets at that <coughs> right there. In a situation like that, <coughs> what, we would, what we would do is you, we would have a spot, we could set up a spot for you guys to send one of your people over and you could sell them out of our, out of our tent. Does that make sense? But we'd still have to have somebody there. Yeah, for that. Yeah. 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 Well, those two don't get to change the set of themselves. Anyway, here's an idea. Uh, here's what you know. Okay. What you can do is, like, and like what we do at our fair, we allow them to buy a single day ticket. They take that single day ticket to the office. They get that discounted off of their season pass. So you don't have to have somebody standing at your gate. But you have to have somebody that tells them, hey, you buy a single day ticket, take that to the office, then you can redeem that, and that, that is discounted off of your season pass. And we do that the first two days of our fair. We don't sell the season passes at the gate. We make them buy a single day ticket, they take that ticket in there, then they get that, you know, if it's $5, $6, they get that discounted off. So. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. 
and I don't I don't mean to interrupt real no, no, quick. No, no, that's fine. No. Uh, but I just want to say, is it every is this an educational seminar? Yeah, it's a little bit more auditor work too there. That's what I mean. A little bit. And and well and really and to, to a point it's not. What we do is we take we take that single day ticket and, and staple it to that receipt. And then we've got that receipt that shows, okay, yeah, it might have been a twenty dollar ticket, but five dollars was discounted. So that receipt's only for twenty dollars. So you know you can work around that, but and I just because this is the first year for this, and you know they approached me, but I think this with I see what's in here, this is a good seminar. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I got a. That answer your question. A concern that though, for us, we sell yeah, we at the gate, and we use base of our ride company, so it's their ticket. We're selling, so we would sell their ticket at the gate and then exchange it for and pay them back for the other. We're still going to be responsible for paying base for that ticket. So you're saying that the, the base gets a percentage of your gate fee? Yes. So what we can do, <coughs> tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not gonna explain it. You tell me if, if, I'm, if I'm not matching what you're thinking. But what we can do at a setup like this, is so we can have it where they come in, and then however you want to work it, hand stamp, arm in. They can give either one as they walk through, and then they can also have a ticket showing that they paid. They can have their hand stamp or their arm in, and they'll have their ticket. And then they can go to base, and base could then, Place the armband, armband 